in our last lecture uh, we have seen solar radiation on tilted surface it that is it is equal to ibrd plus idrd plus ib plus id that is ig into rr so ib is a beam radiation id diffuse radiation and ib plus id R is global radiation rb we uh, have just made a mention uh, rb is a tilt factor for beam radiation tilt factor for diffuse radiation and tilt factor for reflected radiation <coughs> the expressions for tilt factor are as uh, follows so tilt factor for beam radiation e rb is equal to cos theta by cos theta z so cos theta theta is the incident angle and theta z is the zenith angle tilt factor for diffuse radiation rd is related to slope of the collector so which is 1 plus cos beta by 2 beta is the slope of the collector or tilt collector tilt we can say then tilt factor for reflected radiation rr this is also related to uh, the slope of the collector as well as ground reflectance factor so it is 1 minus cos beta by 2 into rho g rho g is the ground reflectance factor the value of ground reflective factor uh, ground reflectance factor is taken universally to be 0.2 at all locations now something regarding solar radiation data how solar radiation data in what form it is available so if you apply to india meteorological department and uh, request them to spare the radiation data the radiation data available will be in this format so uh, it is for 24 hours and 365 days so it is hourly data available for example this is just a abstract or snapshot of the data available in the format from meteorological department india meteorological department so uh, for example the global radiation table is uh, radi radiation data table is different and other tables are different so this is a global radiation data table location for pune location i have called this data in in 2003 so this is global radiation values mentioned in megajoules per meter square so data of the year is 2003 now you can see here the first column is month like right? so all these months are covered in this data right from january till december so january to december 12 months of data is available and then for all days for all days again like from 1st january till 31st january february till 31st of december so all the days like 30 31 days of the year so this is 365 days data is given then then hours so oh, i have just taken the abstract of two days like february second february now the hours are 24 hours but solar radiation is generally uh, available after five hours so the data available is the readings available are from five years so our five is five o'clock so five six seven eight nine till 24 like uh, in the midnight so obviously the midnight or the evening readings are zero here now you can see here the february 2 readings five o'clock reading zero this is a global radiation reading uh, six o'clock reading is zero seven o'clock point not three 8 o'clock goes on increasing 0 0.44, 9 o'clock, 1.24, 1.98. This is in megajoules per meter square. Okay, so it goes on increasing to 2.5, 2.75, 2. and goes on decreasing after 2.71 and all. Again, May, another day, May, similar trend is shown here. So this is just a, uh, is shown to just get an idea of how solar radiation data is available and how we have to convert it uh, for our use. Now here, data available is in megajoules per meter square. Uh, if you want to convert this into kilowatt hours, this is the conversion. 1000 kilo, one megajoule is equal to 1000 kilojoules and 3600 kilojoules is equal to one kilowatt hour. So if you divide this, you will get 0.27 kilowatt hour per meter square. That is one megajoule per meter square equal to this. Diffuse radiation data, uh, which I am showing again, uh, diffuse radiation data in the similar format is also available. Now here, one thing must be noted that on 2nd of February 2003, so this is 2nd of February 2003, at 14 hours, you can say here at 14 hours, 
Ig global radiation was 2.49 megajoule per meter square. So this is what 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 this reading indicates. This reading indicates the energy collected from 1 pm to 2 pm, like 13 hours to 14 hours. So in one hour, how much energy is collected? That 2.49 uh, megajoules of energy is collected per meter square of area. So it is the energy collected in one hour. So this has to be taken into uh, consideration while solving the example or for, while solving the uh, while estimating the resource available or energy incident on the collector. Now this is diffuse radiation data, sample of the diffuse radiation data for the same for the same uh, you can say period February to May 5. So February 2 and May 5 diffuse radiation data. Obviously, diffuse radiations are less as compared to the global radiations. Okay, so 0 0.04, 0 0.023, so like this. These are the diffuse radiations. These dashes indicate the readings are not available, or maybe the, the sky cloudy due to that readings are not available. So we can extrapolate these readings, or we can extrapolate from the previous day or the next day. So, but these readings can be can there there is no much difference in the readings. So, you know, even if the readings are not available, we can easily assume the readings with a close accuracy. Now, the available data can be converted into average instantaneous value. Those are megajoules per meter square. The values available are in megajoules per meter square. We have to convert if you want to convert this into instantaneous values, then the values which we have taken from 1 pm to 2 pm are like 2.49 megajoules. Simply we have to divide by 3600. Okay, convert this into joules. So 2.49 converted into joules divided by 3600 joules. So joules by joules per second. So there are 3600 seconds in, a, in one hour. So this comes out to be joules per second per meter square. So this is 691.6. .6. So 2.49 megajoule per meter square comes out to be 691.6 .6 watt per meter square. Similarly, diffuse radiation also, this is a global radiation. Diffuse radiation it can also be converted, it comes out to be 144.4. Now from global and uh, diffuse radiation, here by mistake it is written as uh, just no, IG, it should be ID here. So here is ID. So, six, so the value of beam radiation is just a subtraction. So 691 minus this 547.2 watt per meter square. So three re readings are available to us. Instantaneous values of uh, radiation intensity. Uh, let us take one example. So for a flat plate collector of two meter square area installed at Pune and the collector is tilted at 21 degrees. So collector tilt is given as 21 degrees. Let us evaluate solar radiation incident on the collector surface on 2nd February, like same date we have which uh, for which the data is available in the previous slides. Surface on 2nd February between 1 pm to 2 pm, same time period we have taken because that data is available to us. This is just for illustration purpose. The collector is south facing. Now the solution, what is given? Flat plate collector is given. Collector area of AC, 2 meter square is given. Location Pune. So latitude of location is 18.53, longitude is 72.5 degrees north. Uh, then date is 2nd February, that is then the day number comes out to be 33, like 31st January is day number 31, starting from 1st of January, then 1st of February is 32 and 2nd of February is 33. Time. Now here we are interested in the quantity of energy collection between 1 pm to 2 pm. Therefore, which time should be taken? So we will take a midpoint, like mid time, we can say. So 1.30 pm is the time we will consider for uh, calculating the uh, local apparent time and all. So uh, as the collector is uh, south facing, the surface azimuth angle gamma is zero. Then what is the strategy? How to go ahead with this uh, solution? First, determine declination angle del, then local apparent time LAT and our angle omega, then with known values of beta which is 21 degrees, gamma 0, determine cos theta z and cos theta. Then determine tilt factors RB, RD and RR, 
and then evaluate solar radiation intensity it in watt per meter square and energy collected in megajoules so this is the calculation of declination day number n he, this is the formula so day number 1 uh, day number n is 33 so if you substitute the value of 33 here we'll get minus 17.24 degrees so declination is negative here now local apparent time the time which we have decided is 1330 hours this is indian standard time so 1330 minus 4 in, this is a formula which we have already discussed so standard time longitude minus local longitude so standard time longitude is at allahabad 82.5 degrees north uh, uh, east and then 72.5 degrees east pune long, longitude so and then minus 13 corresponding to second of february minus 13 is the equation of correction we can see here this so february and then second of february it comes out to be somewhere here okay so this is minus 13 so equation of uh, time correction is minus 13 so lat comes out to be 13 uh, hours and 3 minutes corresponding to lat 13 hours and 3 minutes our angle is calculated it the our angle is minus 15.75 as it is a afternoon so sun has already passed the noon so the our angle has come negative now cos theta z is sin phi sin del plus cos phi cos del cos omega if you substitute the values of phi 18.53 del this value and then phi 18.53 del again this value and omega this value you will get the value of cos theta z cos theta z if you go on substituting you will get 0.7773 this is just a numerical value. so we now that's how we calculate cos theta z so theta z just for the sake of in um, understand uh, or, or uh, curiosity theta z uh, that zenith angle comes out to be 39 degrees then uh, incident angle determine incident angle with known values now which values are known phi is known del is known beta is known omega is known and gamma is known so if you substitute all these values in this equation this equ in this equation if you are doing this calculation once then it uh it may be convenient for you to calculate on a calculator single time but every frequently if you are doing this calculation what i suggest is you better uh, uh go for a excel calculation i will just show it is here the excel sheet is ready so this is a uh, the excel sheet now this is standard time longitude and then local longitude 72.5 beta and all these all these values are put here day number is 33 Time is thirteen point five. Declination, uh, declination we got there as minus. Uh, we can say here. I'll just show you. Declination minus seventeen point two four. Then how come it is here minus three zero one? Excel calculates sine, cos, and all these functions by taking the angle in radians. So all the angles, please keep in mind that while calculating, doing calculating, trigonometric calculations in Excel. please uh, convert the degrees angle into radians so all the calculations will be done in radians now this is not latitude this is local apparent time 13.05 so don't confuse with uh, uh, latitude and uh, local apparent time okay so uh, this is local apparent time then corresponding our angle comes out to be this then cos theta z is this and cos theta comes out to be 0.93 just for the sake of uh, uh, demonstration i will show you that the that the ease of having excel is that you change any parameter then you will get the effect of the parameter suppose i go on changing here i concentrate on this i will just color this with the uh, say blue okay day number if i want to change this to say 15th of april so 105 so what would be cos theta z cos theta z once you enter this formula in excel then it will be easy for you to calculate uh, the parameters or the values of other angles very easily within fraction of time and if you just change the time again here you can go on change so this is very easy in excel so 33 corresponding to 33 day number cos theta comes out to be 0.930 here so let us Come um, back to our calculation. So cos theta z, cos theta is 0.9309. Now R B 
is cos theta by cos theta z and the value of rb comes out to be 1.1976 uh, beta is 21 so rd comes out to be 0.9667 and rr the value of rr is 6.64 into 10 to 3 so with these known values and we have already calculated the values of IG, ID and IV. IG is 691, 144 and IB is 547. Now solar radiation on tilted surface uh, can be calculated like this. So if you substitute the values of all RB, RD and IG, ID and IG here, you will get IT. This IT is in 7 watt per meter square. That is seven nearly 800, 799.5 watt per meter square. Now the collector area is 2 meter square. So now if you multiply, if you multiply this intensity with collector area, then you will get the value of energy incident on the collector between 1 pm to 2 pm. That is, uh, that is the intensity 1599. Now energy incident on the collector between 1 pm to 2 pm, if you just multiply by 3600, you will get this value of 5.7564 megajoules. So 5.75 megajoules of energy is incident on the collector from 1 pm to 2 pm on 2nd February on a collector of 2 meter square year on Pune, so in Pune. So this is the calculation and then we'll do some more uh, numericals. This is just for the sake of illustration. Now there is one uh, thing which was remaining in my previous uh, lectures. There is a formula for solar azimuth angle. When you calculate solar azimuth angles, the calculation of shadow length becomes easy. So solar azimuth angle can be calculated and this is gamma s. So gamma s can be calculated as cos theta z sin phi minus sin del uh, by sin theta z in cos phi. So this is a cos of uh, this is a cos of azimuth angle you can say so i will just change this uh, in uh, when we solve the examples this is cos of gamma s cos gamma s is equal to cos of this everything so with this we can calculate the azimuth angle we will solve many examples uh, by that time if you are interested you can try these examples in my next presentation uh, we will attempt these examples thank you very much